Hey guys, it's me, Grim. I hope you're doing fine and I hope you are joining me today. Um, grab something to work on or just sketch along with me and yeah, today we're going to do another sketchbook page or spread. I'm not sure how much I'm going to do today. I don't want this video to be super long, but I want to have some real time sketching time with you. Also, I won't talk throughout the video, throughout I'm actually drawing. There will be a voiceover, possibly. Um, I'm not going to talk because it doesn't work for me talking and drawing. I can't do this at the same time because I will get nothing done. So, I just wanted to show you my nails. They're so cute. I just did them yesterday. And... I have the little stars and I really like the color combination so maybe we're going to do something with these three colors today but um, yeah I just wanted to show you what I already have since I started sketching on on the sketchbook spread yesterday um, I did a few reference sketches which is what we're going to continue today um, because I really want to learn drawing from from references more because I know it's going to help me and I'm going to talk a little bit about drawing from references in this video today as well so I hope this is something that you are interested in because I'm really interested in this currently and I think you can develop your art a lot through drawing from references so I just wanted to show you what I have already so um, just going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see okay so as you can tell you we got the girl with some eyes. It's not done yet, it's just a sketch. And here we got um, the Madonna. Is it called Madonna? Um, I took it from a reference from um, a Madonna in a church. So uh, I will put the pictures somewhere here. Um, when I find them and then you can see how I developed this from the reference picture so and this is what we're going to continue today so grab something to work or grab something to sketch or both and then we're going to have a lovely time together so before we really dive into the draw with me I wanted to first off show you the business cards which I have ordered so long ago but they didn't arrive because of corona and now they did and I'm very pleased with how they look. I already looked at them, I just wanted to show you how they look. It's a little bit hard to open it up. So and here they are. Okay. So if you've watched any of my studio vlogs, you have seen me designing this card. And I'm absolutely ple pleased with how they printed. So just a quick recap. These were the other cards that I ordered. And as you can tell, um, the frame, like the black frame that I draw drew, it is not centered at all. And the side as well. And... Here you can see these exact opposite and I even like how they coded it. It's like very nice texture, very nice paper. I really like it. And yeah, this is even more stable than this. This is like pretty flexible and not very cool because I think I ordered the same paper. Um, and this was from another shop so to be sure about that I posted this on my Instagram story this whole disaster about the business cards I just wanted to give you a little bit of update on how things are looking right now and I'm very pleased with the business cards from also merch and I'm definitely going to order more off of their website because I'm very pleased with the result So let's 
let's finally start drawing. As always, I'm starting with a sketch and you might already know the process of how I draw things if you watch my videos. And yeah, today I'm sketching with a blue pilot pencil, pilot color pro, I think it's called. And um, the reason for that is that I'm using watercolors today and with this pencil, the, the lines are less visible and it's easier for me to erase them rather than using a pencil, a regular pencil. And I even want to get a pink one since my art is mainly pink and uh, I don't really use a lot of blue tones and that's why I think the pink would be even better because it would be even less visible than the blue one but you will see at the, at the end that you can almost not tell that there are blue lines or that there have been any blue lines so that's very great I really like these pencils and um, yeah like I've already said we're going to talk about watercolors today and we're also going to talk about drawing from references because I've already told you that this whole sketchbook page is drawn from draw, drawn from references and I just want to talk about it how I do this and all that but we're going to dive into that later on but first I'd like to ask you what you are currently working on what you are creating what you are doing while listening to me or while watching this video um, I'd really like to see what you are doing and if you draw something, create something, whatever, you can message me on Instagram or post something and tag me and I would really like to see it and I would really love to see what you created or did during that time and I'm also always happy when someone, when, when someone of you tells me that they like my videos because I put a lot of effort into them. And I hope you see that. So I just wanted to mention that and I'm very, very happy that I gained so many new followers in the in the past, not in the past, in the last weeks. I'm beyond happy about this. I'm very, very happy and I'm very, very thankful for that. So I will continue making videos. Um, and yeah, until then, you can always check my Instagram for updates because I am active every day on Instagram. So I just wanted to get that out there and now we're going to talk about drawing from references. So what I wanted to tell you beforehand is that I actually wrote a script today. Like I made notes, not an actual written, written, out, written out script, but I have notes though that I'm not talking about weird things like in most of my videos. <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's go, let's just talk about it. Okay, so I haven't used references in a very long time or for a long time and um, the reason for that is I was afraid that my art was not original enough if I use references. So um, the, I, from my point now I think that this is very stupid to think like this but I completely understand why I thought this way um, and I uh, have a, just a very different mindset. Um, not all the reference sketch that I did are good and the one at the bottom you will see it right now and uh, this one is not from a sketch but from a reference because I was tired of looking for references so the first thing I can tell you about drawing from references if you want to sit down and sketch something, you should have references beforehand before you start drawing and not look up references when you are just into drawing right now because it's just very annoying and that's why I think the girl at the bottom did not turn out as I wanted her to be but that's a different story. Yeah. So everything that I'm telling you now um, is from my own experience. Could be that you have a completely different opinion about this and that you have other experiences. I would love to hear your experience. If, if there's anything that you would like to tell me, I'm open 
to your feedback and I am very happy to get feedback from you guys. So, um, so references help me a lot when I finally realize that I need to use references um, because references help a lot understanding poses, understanding anatomy, also facial features and expressions are much more understandable if you look at reference pictures. So just basically everything that you want to learn to draw, you should look up a reference for it because Let's be real, we can't imagine every pose, we can't imagine every facial expression. If we look into a mirror, we can see our face, but at some point, sometimes we can't really achieve this, drawing our own face. I, for example, I find really hard drawing myself. Um, the My self-portraits that I do, I feel like they don't look at all like me. I always draw a better version of myself, I think but um, I don't feel like they look like me. And when I draw from my face, using my face as a reference, it's always very hard to do something useful with it. I don't know why um, it doesn't work for me. So, and I think that um, if we don't use references and we just keep drawing things that we know, there are, a few poses that we draw all the time and this of course gets boring and not only the poses are the same at some point but also the facial expressions and features are going to be the same and this is what we call the same face, face syndrome and then your art feels super monotone people will notice it and this is why i mainly got into drawing from references because i realized that my art was not really developing and going any further and I had a lot of issues with imagining certain poses and I couldn't just draw them from my mind so it's completely okay to look up references for this and what helps a lot if you have the same face syndrome is looking up interesting references so this is a huge thing um, I, fe I feel like a lot of people draw like those um, beautiful girls on Pinterest. Uh, I know that another art, uh, YouTuber artist, I think it was er Ergo Josh, he made a video about that too. And drawing those beautiful girls with those not very much any interesting facial features um won't help you with creating characters or something like this and so i think if you want to have or want to learn to draw interesting characters and want to develop your style you have to look up very interesting references so for portraits i would suggest that you choose a face with interesting facial features shadows light interesting pose from a face, maybe a hand is on the face that you don't know how to really draw and you look at the reference and you think it looks cool but you don't know how to draw it and then of course an interesting expression. You can learn to draw emotions a lot through um, references and yeah also for full body the same like chose poses that you have never drawn poses that you feel like I could never draw this and I think this is the moment where you should take this reference and draw it because this is exactly where our insecurities make us stop and we should overcome this and do it anyway and by the way I will put the links to the Pinterest board with my references in the info box and you will or you can check it out and maybe some of these reference pictures pictures can help you i know the pinterest board is not huge and yeah i so even sometimes forget adding my references to it but if i find something that i really like and i want to keep the reference i always save it on to that pinterest board 
So I also have the references for these sketchbook pages. So it also would be really fun if you make like a drink game and every time I say reference you have to drink. Like, I know I'm talking a lot about references, so that's why I have to say a lot of the time reference. I'm very sorry about that already. But a while ago when I started drawing from references, <laughs> sorry, um, the human body was very hard for me to understand. And I still don't completely understand it. Like I've said, I can't imagine every pose on this planet. So what I did at the beginning, because I was very afraid of drawing from real life pictures, I don't know why it was just such a huge thing. My style is not very um, real life. And therefore it was very hard for me drawing from real life references. I don't know why. It just Maybe it's just me, but maybe some other artists have this I or had this issue too. I don't know. And so I looked at other artists, um, artists that I looked up to, I studied their work, I studied how they draw certain poses and this is how I developed a lot of my style, learning from other artists and learning from how or learning how other artists do certain things because this helped me a lot at the beginning and now I use real pictures for reference and um, then you can like at the beginning it is very hard it was very hard for me transforming a real picture into my art in, into my style and it was easier for me looking at artists r pictures and using them as a reference rather than real life pictures i uh, yeah i don't know maybe it's because i was not very um confident in my style or my style was not fully there I don't know how to completely explain this but maybe you'll get what I mean and what I already want or what, what I want to mention as well don't be afraid to study other artists work other artists art because um, I think we can learn a lot from each other and it's always important not to copy anybody's art. That's where the problem starts. But um, I think it's always great to learn from each other and my art is f free to be used as a reference. And I know that a few of my Instagram followers use my art as reference, which I'm very happy about. And yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. And yeah, I'm sorry. I uh, I know that I have notes, but sometimes it's very hard for me to yeah wrap my mind around what I want to say. Even though I have the thought in my mind, I need to transform it into English language. That's that. And so now I just want to quickly talk about why I chose to draw the Holy Madonna because maybe some of you already have question marks over your head. And yeah, the reason for that is I think she has a very char characteristic face and it looks very emotional, yet very artificial. So what I mean with that, to be fair, when we cry, when we actually cry, we don't look like this. We look... Take me for example, I look very, my, my I look so puffy, my eyes are puffy, everything is swollen. Um, I look very, very stupid when I'm crying and not as beautiful as the Holy Madonna. And most people don't look beautiful when they're crying. And yeah, so that's what I'm always, that I've always been interested in, achieving this artificial beautiful look yet there's emotion and you can th feel it also i think that madonna has just like jesus like the jesus statue in the churches they have this face and you always notice it like thousands of different artists draw through these people and made statues of these two people but you will always recognize them because they have these facial features that everybody uses and yeah so in general I'm very interested in churches 
I like the architecture. I like the symbolism. Uh, I pretty much like everything about them besides religion. I'm not religious at all. I just wanted to keep that or to get that get that straight. I'm not religious. I only believe in myself, my abilities and love. So yeah. Also wherever I go I need to check for churches to visit because I absolutely love looking at that architecture. So yeah, that was just a quick side note that I wanted to put out there. I don't know if that's interesting to you. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, video um, at this point. And now I want to talk about watercolors. I know that was not a good bridge passage, but I don't have one either. So I'm just going to take you right to the topic that I want to talk about and yeah like I haven't used references for a long time I haven't used watercolors in about in about almost two years because I was really focused on getting better at digital art and whereas at the same time my traditional art skills have started to regress and I I realized this when I sat down to make my sketchbook pay my sketchbook cover, which I have a video about if you are interested in that. And when I sat down, yeah, dr painting the sketchbook cover, I was not very confident with the brush at all. I was not familiar with the paint because, of course, digital is very very different from traditional art. And yeah, and throughout this whole time, throughout the whole two years, I haven't realized how much I missed watercolors until I tried them again on this day where I drew the sketchbook page, which is crazy. Like, I was so into digital art that I didn't even notice how much I missed my traditional art skills and traditional art. So the watercolors that I used for this um, are the Mozart watercolors, I guess they are called. And I have abandoned them back then because I didn't like them. The other watercolor palette that I have is the Vincent, not the Vincent, it's the Van Gogh um, pocket watercolor palette. And it is very good i like the colors might not be the best watercolor pad out there but i really like how it's working and i didn't have any problems with this so but this palette in 2018 when i got them i used them once and never again because i didn't like the colors at all not the colors the paint the colors are on a different page i always mix up colors and paint because in german it's the same word. We only have one word for both of these things. So, um, yeah. So how do I feel about those watercolors at that moment? <sighs> As you can tell by this pullover that I'm drawing at this moment, it is streaky. So streaky. I mean, look at it. But... Um, they don't at all have the watercolor look that I don't know if you know what I mean, but watercolors have at the border of the surface that you've drawn. They have more color at the border. I don't know if you know what I mean, but they have a certain watercolor texture. And this paint doesn't have it at all. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but somehow I have never had any complaints with the Van Gogh palette. But... With this palette, it's not working and I'm not doing anything else. So I use them the same. I'd never use watercolors any different in any different way. So I don't know, maybe they're harder to use or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Also, this part I just sped up to show you that I was doing a lot during this time. But you can't really see something happening. I mean, you see that I'm doing the eyebrows, but... Altogether, I just wanted to tell you this little part that sometimes you're working on something and you don't see 
what you have done through this time even though you've been working all 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 day long or something i know how that feels and just wanted to quickly let you know but now we're getting right back to what i was talking about um yeah i've talked about the van gogh palettes and that i didn't have any issues with this palette yet um and this palette for me i mean at the at the end i really liked the, the streaky texture on the pullover or the clothes at all i don't know why but it really was annoying for me it and on the hair for the clothes i think the texture is cool but for the hair i think it doesn't work so the pink works fine i think the lighter colors are great like the skin tones that I used are great, the pink tones are great, they're not as streaky as the dark colors, for example, um, Madonna's hair and, 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 yeah, the, the, the clothes of the other girls. So, um, maybe somebody has some experience with this palette and if they have, then they can definitely let me know and tell me if I'm doing something wrong with it. But yeah, I just feel that it looks very scary during the process, how I apply the paint and how the paint looks, like this tricky shirt that you've seen earlier. But I think at the end it really fit, fits my style because as, if, as you know, I'm using a lot of textures in my digital art. And I really like textures as well. So um, I think at the end it works all right. And it doesn't look bad at all. So I'm very fine with it. I just, I'm just wondering how this happened. But I prefer my Van Gogh palette over this one. And I'm also debating over getting um, some handmade watercolors, maybe some glittery ones because I absolutely like glitter at the moment and I want to draw some glittery pink hair on some girl so I have that in my mind but I need to buy watercolor for this project so uh, I already looked up a few shops on Etsy and I might order them soon but yeah but now I'm going to stop talking and leave you alone, thinking about what I've just said, um, putting some music on and then you can watch the last about 10 minutes of this video. Maybe you are just fin finishing your work off and yeah, I hope you have had a nice working time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you follow me and like it if you like this video and I hope you join me during the next draw with me or during the next video that I will do. So I'm very thankful that you've joined me today and yeah, I will um, catch you in the next video, I guess. And I will say bye now. Thank you.